new tab has appeared in the left sidebar alongside layers and assets. When you click on it, you can start managing both the themes and the token sets. And within each of them, you have the types of tokens allow you to modify. All right, so as an example, I've brought that could be an excerpt from a design system. I say it's an excerpt because here as a designer, I have already made several design decisions. Not only on the color palette for the dark and light theme that my buttons will have, but I've also made a decision about the name I've given uh, to the global tokens and how I reference them in terms of the alias that indicates their use in my design system. In this case, Mint 100 color will be uh, my primary color in dark mode and the purple 100 color will be my primary color in the light mode. Then the semantic tokens in white indicate the specific usage and provide a lot of context uh, regarding the applicability of these tokens. So since we are working on buttons, the button prefix to work on our primary button, its background and in the default state. All right, so let's start by creating our first set, which we've decided to call it global. We activate it, important, and now we can start creating our first tokens. Call it mint 100, mention alien, and paste the value. I can paste the value or type manually or click on the color to use the color picker. Okay, below there is a description field that allows us to add documentation or make references to another token. This is very useful when the tokens are more complex or semantic. Now I have my color created. Uh, if I hover it, I can see that Penpot provides information without having to open the token, such as its name and its values. So next, the following token, which will be our mint. 200 okay i paste the color and save it all right i'm going to continue creating the rest of the tokens and we proceed from here a few tokens later okay now i have already registered the tokens related to colors border radius spacing and some tokens that i've used as reference which i have registered in the dimension category as you can see if i open the token there is uh, one called dimension base with a value of four and scale is a token with the value of 2. The interesting part comes when, for example, if I edit the smallest border radius, xs, we can see that its value is the dimension base minus the scale, in this case, uh, 2. I can perform simple arithmetic operations with the tokens to achieve other values that brings consistency to my design system. As you can see, a small border radius is value of 4, which is my dimension base. The median border radius is the dimension base multiplied by the scale, which equals 8. And the value of the large border radius I've created is the median border radius multiplied by the scale, resulting 16. The interesting thing here is that when I modify the scale or the dimension base, say it changes to 8, my tokens change because they use that reference. So this is super useful and has tremendous potential. Imagine how you could adapt different styles and different systems for various devices or resolutions. It's very interesting. Okay, I'm going to revert it back to four. Okay, all right, let's continue. Now we are going to create the alias for our global tokens. It's interesting to start differentiating between tokens from the dark theme and the light theme. To do this, we are going to create a new set called alias. And by including a slash dark in the naming, a subset is created. For the alias set, I created the dark subset. I'll activate it and will create tokens within. As you can see, I retain my global tokens and within the dark subset, we start creating the ones. I'm going to use, in this case, the primary color and the value of mint 100, primary dark color, another token, I will use the mint 200. And so I will continue creating and referencing the tokens. A few tokens later. Now I have already created my alias, referencing my dark and light tokens, as you can see here from the purples and greens. Now it's time to start creating our semantic tokens for our button. To do this, we create a new set called semantic, and within we are going to create 
our background color, which will be our primary color we have here. Next, uh, we create the color for the buttons. Border, which is our primary dark. Great. Finally, we create uh, the token for the text color, which is called text. Okay. Additionally, since I don't have it identified here, but I think we'll need it, we can create another token called, uh, let's say, bottom primary border radius or something like that, for example. And it will have the dimension of border radius median, which I believe it was eight. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Now I have um, my bottom primary border radius and the three colors in the semantic set. We activate it and move on to our button, which we have here with barely any styles, but that's going to change quickly. If I select the element and go to the token, I want to apply a right click on the tokens uh, show me the available application options for each token in this case the border radius can be applied to all corners or to each one individually i want to apply it to all okay let's apply a few more things and the primary background will be applied as a fill to the button the primary border will be applied as stroke and select the text the text token will be applied as color text this way my button already has the primary dark style selected if i were here to activate the light tokens as you can see the light reference would be activated this is very useful and powerful imagine the number of components and elements we can work within our design system <laughs>